came to my attention. Uh, there's a recent article from last month uh, that starts with a Nazi punching reference. So um, it's on uh, msnbc.com slash opinion. Uh, it says MSNBC opinion piece. Indiana Jones highlights the limits of Hollywood's Nazi obsession. Um, it's too bad the decades of anti-Nazi films seemingly done so little to inculcate the U.S. polity against fascism. Um, and uh, the, Who wrote this? Oh, we will get to that. Uh, so, um, but first, I just want to establish recent talk of Nazi punching. This is uh, an article from a couple weeks ago. Indiana Jones would be happy to punch neo-Nazis, Harrison Ford said in a recent interview promoting the newest installment of the iconic franchise, Indiana Jones, The Dial of uh, Dead, uh, Destiny. He'd uh, push him out of the way to get in the first uh, first punch, Ford said, as well he should. Um, okay. Now, this guy's criticized that fine. Uh, he has an interesting criticism. So uh, before we get to his, his criticism, I do want to get to who wrote it. Uh, pretty sure some of the people on the screen know who this is, but uh, does everybody know, uh, is everybody familiar with uh, Noah Berlatsky? Why does that name sound familiar? I, I am because he is often part of the discourse. I think sometimes for really weird takes that he has right um and he recently was for for that's all i remember i think there's probably like three different uh, i did not debate him but he did uh he did write an article about me back in uh december 2020 um not just about me but part of it was about me uh and, what did you do uh i did was it for msnbc it. Uh, he didn't write it on MSNBC. Uh, he wrote Who did he write it on? Arc it Digital Media. Uh, yeah, Medium. Arc Digital Media is what it was called. Uh, it actually, it's migrated, so it's, but I, so I found a version we could look at that's uh, archived on Medium, but it's... Did he call you a punk? Uh, no, he just called me a class reductionist. So, oh. uh, um, so yeah, it's called Why, Why Class First Leftists Are Wrong. Um Defining leftism based on economics, excluding identity, is theoretically, empirically, and ethically misguided. Uh, there's, um, so he's uh, he's quoted me at the beginning as an example of a class first leftist. Uh, Burgess argues that oppression based on race, gender, sexuality, or based on identity, uh, economic structure, by contrast, is quote objective, unquote, and real. Blah blah blah, right? So I'm I'm I think actually maybe the only example of class first leftism as I'm looking back through this for a couple of years since I read it. Um that uh that that he discusses in the article. Uh he um uh he says uh class first leftists also argue that class provides a more objective basis for organizing, as Burgess puts it, quote, the movement against police violence be more effective if it were primarily framed as a matter of urgent self-interest for poor people of all races. Well, that's dumb. I don't know why I said that. Um, mm -hmm. um, also, there's a book by Cedric Johnson that's uh, largely devoted to uh, arguing about this. We're going to talk about the show in a couple of weeks. Um, but anyway, so he goes through uh, My Many Sins. Uh, it's uh, uh, and um, uh, there's a fun section here where he talks about things that I hypothetically might say that I haven't said, but you know, he could like imagine me saying, I guess that would be bad. Like uh, the uh, uh, class is the main thing. You must focus on class, worry less about other forms of oppression, the name of solidarity. And if that's the case, anybody who raises questions about racism and labor movement is undermining the more important effort. Simply raising concerns about sexual harassment, left wing political campaigns makes you a traitor to the cause about which all I have to say is hypothetical Ben really sounds like an asshole. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know why he's hypothetically taking these positions. I think they're really bad. Uh, you know, that like you shouldn't talk about racism or labor movement or sexual harassment and, you know, leftist politics. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess, you know, he peered into the possible worlds where I said that shit, but uh, they, I would think that those things would actually undermine uh, class solidarity there'd actually be good reasons to oppose them on those grounds but whatever uh he uh he ultimately works his way up to at the end of the article he says class first leftists portray themselves as the vanguard as i so often have uh i'm the vanguard uh used to be the main thing first thing i would say 
uh, when Jason and I were neighbors, when I'd see him in the morning, you know, just yeah, to he, he, that's how he would come in the door and then he'd slam it <laughs> on the Vanguard, on the Vanguard. Uh, but Let's their see. theories are confused. Their facts are empirically incorrect and their ethics are often reactionary garbage. I appreciate that often. Uh, so it's you know, often. Uh, reactionary garbage. The rest of the time, it's actually top notch stuff, but it's <laughs> liberation that liberation that isn't intersectional isn't liberation at all. It's just a new white male cis hat boss taking the place of the old. All the words, <laughs> say all the words, give everybody a oh, say the words, King, say the words. Yeah, uh, all you have to do is say the words. Nobody listens to what you fucking say. They're listening for the fucking words. And if you don't say the words, then motherfuckers get mad. He just wrote a piece full of the words. He can kiss the deepest, darkest regions of my ass. And that's reparations. <laughs> yeah, fair. Uh, so, um, you know, Noah might actually struggle with that argument. But uh... yeah, <laughs> I thought you were raised first. <laughs> Racist. Um, yeah, oh, somebody's not paid his reparations payments. Uh, <laughs> so, the, um, so yeah, that was a couple of years ago. I haven't thought much about Noah, uh, more recently. He came up 2021 because of a controversy that's not even worth it to recap. But, um, I will say the, the funny thing about Noah Berlatsky. So he writes shit like this. Uh, I got one, like the Chapo guys. I think he's written like 10 articles about how bad they are. Jesus. uh the, the um uh and uh you know i think he has like a russian novel full of denunciations of jesse signal you know all his enemies is he know. the guy that made that jesse signal guy like uh the worst person in the world uh, he he's definitely he's definitely he definitely uh did his part at least i don't know i don't know if it was single-handed but um Jesus. in any case uh that's one genre of noah berlatsky essay the other genre of noah berlatsky essay is like shit that's often for much bigger publications. Uh, you know, like uh, the MSNBC Atlantic kind of uh, things that Noah Berlatsky publishes tend to be like less like, here's why some leftists exclude class reductionist and more like, here's why this Marvel movie is awesome and shit like that. Uh, and um, in, uh, but this Indiana Jones piece, I think uh, builds the two genres of Noah Berlatsky uh, commentary and I uh, just want to uh, want to share uh, share some of his uh, his insights so this is, uh, from a couple of uh, weeks ago. Um, so uh, he has um, there's. Um, but unfortunately, the latest Indiana Jones installment continues a Hollywood tradition of punching Nazis without doing much to explain why Nazis are bad. So I, I really want everybody to pause and marinate in this insight that the Indiana Jones movies don't explain why Nazis are bad. I, I think I disagree. He never saw the first one. Yeah. <laughs> Just rewatched that recently. Yeah. Yeah. Like watch the first one, dude. I think they kind of lay it out. But silly me. I don't know. I mean, movies. like, is, is there ever a point where a character like looks Kills at the Jew. camera and says, uh, to be clear? <laughs> <laughs> For everybody who's watching this, who isn't sure that Nazis are bad or is maybe on the fence about whether or not Nazis are bad, um, these guys are really bad. And then they just do the Wikipedia page for the Holocaust. Like, this dude's a serious writer, huh? Yeah, probably. You gotta learn how to say the words, Ben. MSNBC, man. Uh, and, uh, I was to, to adventure movies for political education. <laughs> I mean, in the, the first two, because I never saw the third one, actually. Wait, wait. The first two Raiders so, of the hold, Lost Hold on, hold on. You never, you never saw Last Crusade? Never saw Last Crusade. Okay. Wait, uh, Last Crusade is, one. which one is the one with his dad? Last That's Last Crusade. Crusade. Yep, never saw it. Okay, all right. Uh, hold off on that on some on some future trip to Baja. We'll uh, we'll watch the Last Crusade, but um, yeah. it's definitely worth your time. It's uh, yeah. Is it's, it the crystals? That's Crystal Skull, or that's something else? No, 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 no. no crystal no. Skull was the fourth one, which is decades later, and uh, that was 
a abomination in the sight of God. Uh, that's uh, um, like, you know, somehow I'm an atheist, but I still think it was an abomination. In the sight of God. <laughs> that's how bad the crystal skull was. Uh, but last Christmas, it's a classic. Um, a Nazi, I didn't. <laughs> And the, the cast in, in the Crystal Skull was just incredible, and still, it just is, a, is an absolute turd. So, uh, so this was this uh, this essay about Indiana Jones was from a couple of weeks ago. That was the MSNBC one, uh, but uh, it's been brought to my attention uh, that the uh, this is not the first time he's made this sort of point. So, back in 2018, uh, this is in the Huffington Post. Uh, he has um, an essay on Schindler's List. Uh, Steven Spielberg thinks Schindler's List is more relevant than ever. It's not. Um, and in there, he makes a very similar point. Uh, so uh, he says here um, that uh, in Schindler's List, Jewish people uh, are always object lessons, never conscious teachers. No Jewish character criticizes or explains the evils of Nazi propaganda. So I just want everybody to 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 really you know consider this that like this this biting criticism of Schindler's List that there's never a point where one of the uh, emaciated, <laughs> half dead concentration camp victims uh, in Schindler's List like maybe just you know has a conversation with another one of them you know where he's like hey. Have you ever thought about why it is that the people who are doing this to us are bad? There, there's a there's a rule that uh, I learn in in my writing school. It's it's you're supposed to tell, not show, right? We all know that in fiction, you're supposed to just <laughs> he loves just, fourth wall breaking, like Ferris Bueller. Just tell t- tell you the point and yeah. not if and nobody if says show, it. How are you supposed to know exactly? Like, are you just because, supposed to gleam from like Schindler's List and the events of that movie? Or are you supposed to somehow make this inferential leap to the Nazis being bad? Does, does he have any reviews on like the um, um, Deadpool movies? Like, oh, these are the greatest movies ever. Like, <laughs> breaking of the fourth wall. Now I know why he's using his fucking. Yeah, now I know why he's wearing a red costume and not a brown costume. Yeah, oh Fle- flea bag. Uh, <laughs> like uh, anything that breaks the fourth wall for this cat yeah, is like yeah. amazing. Big you know? Save by the Bell fan. <laughs> <laughs> we need to go back to the days when Zach Morris really told us what was what. Um, when 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 a movie starts with a character in a wacky situation, he's like, "Why didn't they turn to the camera and say you're probably wondering how I got into this situation?" <laughs> <laughs> now we know who who these movies are for. Yeah. Who the fuck am I for? Why, dude? No one ever says why they blew up Alderaan. I don't fucking know what's going on. Vader is just following orders, bro. <laughs> to fight fascism, you don't just need to feel; you need to listen. Uh, to listen um the targets of fascism are the people best able to express what's happening to them and what they need to fight it uh but schindler's um, sh- tanks <laughs> yeah but how would you know that if they didn't tell you in the dialogue in the movie um the targets <laughs> please of fascism- help we're dying in here i <laughs> sorry brother i don't what, what do you need dude spell it out for me dude I mean, uh, I remember in, in Saving Private Ryan, Tom Hanks turns to the camera and says, y'all, we need some more guns. <laughs> uh, targets of fascism are the best people able to express what's happening to them and how they need to fight it. But Schindler's List presents victims as supplicants. My favorite sentence possibly ever written by Noah Berletsky. Uh, it doesn't model any way to show support for journalist Jamel Hill, who fell out with her network for saying that Trump is a white supremacist. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> Didn't Schindler's List come out in the nineties? I guess he means it metaphorically, but like still. Yeah, like, I, guess, I don't I guess... even understand how those two things would be in the same universe. <laughs> look, just when shit like that happens, we should look to sh- Schindler's List because it's a movie about fascism and. Uh-huh. Uh, in Noah Berlatsky's eyes, this Jamel Hill thing was also about fascism. So uh, the movie about fascism should model how to uh, to respond to situations like this. 
but uh, he's looked into it. He's carefully done a frame by frame study of Schindler's List, like this Pruder's film, you know, looking, looking for, uh, you know, looking for any guidance about how you should respond to a TV talking head uh, getting uh, in trouble with her network for saying something controversial and he can't find it. And really that is a flaw in the movie. I, I'd like to think that Steven Spielberg would now admit that they, uh, that he should have worked something into Schindler's list that, you know, we're like, I don't know, maybe one of the concentration camp victims said, uh, would say during the Nazis are bad conversation, what they need to, to fight them say and also the only nazis the nazis you need to worry about aren't just the ones who you know like that that guard we're trying to be quiet so so he doesn't come over here and beat us uh those aren't the only nazis we should also worry <laughs> about mean bosses <laughs> yeah we should mean also worry about about tv bosses who are yeah. too soft on uh demagogic politicians those are also those are also nazis I, I cannot wait to read his article on 1941. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I just wanted to. That guy you know. sucks. Uh, he does, and uh, you know he is. Uh, he's also got to be the kid of somebody rich. When I was looking at these articles, uh, that's uh, you know the Atlantic has uh, articles by Noah Berlatsky. So uh, the. Jesus. Uh, the man he hated has, that movie irreversible. He was like, I don't get it, dude. The man has some uh, some good publications. Um, so um, I don't know. I think the uh is the Atlantic good because didn't they also publish like Dinesh D'Souza? They publish a lot of people. Yeah, and you know what? Uh Dinesh and Noah both got paid more for each article than Jacobin has ever paid me. Uh, <laughs> the course of my so like all put together but yeah. <laughs> so um i don't know I, you gotta uh, start saying the things ben and then see if I that guess, helps man. our, our I, bottom I guess, line see, you know all right so look forward to uh uh you know look forward to my next my next article been? for uh for for jacobin uh the uh uh, the importance of intersexually listening uh, to uh, to victims of uh, cishet uh, patriarchal whiteness. Uh, my journey away from class reductionism, and uh, <laughs> we'll uh, you know we'll just see how it goes. And you know, it's uh, I don't know. Um, maybe uh, you know, maybe one day I can you know like like I could write something about why the. Uh, 2035 uh version uh reboot of uh of spider-man uh would have uh would have been better if uh, if it had been more consciously anti-fascist so um uh something to look forward to you have been watching free public content from give them an argument to access every single episode of the show the main show on uh, monday nights all of the streams, all of the uh, debate breakdowns, all of the patron exclusive post games on Monday nights, all of the patron exclusive bonus episodes every week, and much, much more. Go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess. I cannot resist ending this with, don't be foolish. <laughs>